Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Functional Friday. I'm Dr. Kirk here at Premier Chiropractic, and today's episode is going to be on disc herniations and sciatica. Okay, so as we all probably know from past videos, your discs sit right in between your vertebra right here. So the white things here are the vertebra, and then the clear things down here are your discs. Okay, now the disc can be injured by a few different mechanisms. The most commonly injured is from in the low back. So the most commonly injured segments are actually L4, L5, and L5, S1. So that's kind of the ones right at the bottom of the spine here. A lot of times that's due to excess movement happening in your low back due to number one, a lack of core stability or a lack of movement elsewhere, either in your hips or kind of your thoracic spine or your upper back, okay? So that's why when we look at someone who has a disc herniation, we obviously we want to take away their symptoms as fast as possible, but we also want to find out why that happened. And if we look at it from a movement perspective, it's very important to understand that we need stability here in our core to brace our low back. And that doesn't come in the way of a lot of common exercises used like crunches and sit-ups and things that I've talked about in past videos. It's more stabilizing overall, okay? So if we look at the disc from a top-down view, what it looks like and what you can kind of think of it like is like a jelly donut. So it's circular in nature, okay? It has what's called a nucleus pulposus, which sits in the center. And if you want to think of it like that's the jelly part of the jelly donut, okay? Surrounding that, we have a bunch of rings making up what's called the annulus fibrosus. All that is, is the surrounding part of, let's call it the jelly donut, okay? Now, as we take steps throughout the day, as we do a lot of different tasks, we want our discs to be able to distribute force evenly. So side to side, front to back, we want that pressure and force to be distributed evenly, okay? But what can happen is, if you start moving in a way that's improper, it can start to alter this jelly donut from being in the center. So it's like someone's pushing on one part of the jelly donut, causing the jelly to go to a different part. Now, as we look at the most common um, way this happens is we start flexing our spine too much, okay? And then that actually starts to push the jelly back, okay? That can lead to a herniated disc. So that is what we see here is a disc herniation, this little red part. Now that can lead to some subsequent um, nerve irritation and things like that. A very, very common sign of a disc herniation is radiation, tingling, numbness down the back of the leg. Um, it's also called sciatica a lot of times, okay? So what we wanna make sure of is that we're not predisposing ourselves to this from a movement perspective. Okay, so bracing our core is very important. And then as we look at this, what happens when the disc herniation starts to take place is you start to get tears in what's called that annulus fibrosus. So you get tears in the rings that are surrounding this thing. And then the jelly starts to move back. Eventually you can get like an out poaching or a bulging. So if you heard of a bulging disc, that's what they're talking about is this surrounding layer starts to bulge out. And then that can lead to actually a little bit of impingement on the nerve coming out of there. Okay, so that out poaching is definitely something we want to avoid. But at the same time, just because you have a disc herniation doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have surgery. Um, a lot of manual therapy and a lot of exercises can help disc herniation symptoms to decrease and actually they're finding that up to two thirds of disc herniations actually resorb, meaning they will go back to their natural place if you just give them time. Now that time can be tough, especially when you're in a lot of pain and you have those, those symptoms going on. So depending on the severity of the disc herniation, there is times where we definitely need to get surgery and then there's times where we should go with a more conservative care route. What we combine is a lot of different techniques to hopefully give our patients the best results with disc herniation type symptoms. So the first thing we do is we will adjust them and we will work out the low back muscles and we will bring proper movement back to that area um, just to help things to start moving properly again and to avoid maybe some scar tissue formation and to avoid um, a lot of the inflammation that comes from just no movement happening, okay? So we want proper joint movement to be happening. We want to be able to calm down the muscles a little bit with some manual therapy techniques, and then we'll progress to some rehab. Now, 
rehab first and foremost is gonna be in the form of usually McKenzie extension exercises. So McKenzie exercises are based on directional preference. So if you, you, we have a lot of pain on flexion, so bending over, um, or if we have a disc herniation that's kind of pointing back here, so just like that, what we wanna do is bring equal and opposite motion. So we start to give them extension-based exercises um, and that's called repetitive end range loading exercises that will hopefully reduce the disc herniation symptoms and then help it to kind of go back to how it was before. Okay, so those are that's something that we use very, very commonly. We also include a lot of core stability exercises. Now, um, core stability is more for prevention of making this any worse and it's more for preventing anything else from going on with your low back later on as well. So it's just teaching people how to properly use their core, okay? Um, along with that, you know, we do some muscle stim and, and all these other types of little manual therapies, but that's basically, in a nutshell, how we work up uh, a disc herniation. Number one, we wanna find out what's causing it. So say if it's tight hips, obviously we're gonna work out the tight hips, but just finding what was the key link that maybe caused that disc herniation in the first place is very, very important to us. Um, and it helps guide our treatment. Okay, so I hope you, I hope this makes sense. And I hope you guys understand that if you have a disc herniation, it's not the end of the world. You can definitely bounce back from it. There is conservative care approaches that have gotten great results in research with disc herniation. So um, I always say try conservative care first. If that doesn't work, then you can look to a more invasive procedure after that, okay? So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you all for tuning in. If you haven't already checked out our Facebook page, make sure to like it, Premier Chiropractic here in Minot, North Dakota. If you haven't checked out our website, premierchiropracticnd.com. And as always, if you have a disc herniation or any of those numbness and tingling type symptoms, make sure to give our clinic a call before it turns into something even bigger later on. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a great day.